Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to interview Omar, who is from Napoli. Well, he studies in Napoli, Luigi Van Vitelli, and we're going to ask him some questions. I'm going to quickly flash up his socials if you guys want to go and follow him. But yeah, hi Omar, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so fun fact, nice I actually already <laughs> interviewed Omar, but then lost the footage. So this is our second <laughs> attempt at uh, doing this. We're going to basically split the interview into two parts. In the first part, we're going to talk all about the university. And in the second part, we're going to talk a bit more about Omar and more importantly, the city. I really, really recommend you guys actually watch the city video because I am of the opinion that you should pick your university based on what city you're going to live in and not the university itself. So with that, Omar, could you like start us off by telling how the timetables in Napoli work? <clears throat> so um, you're talking about the timetables of the university, not like the, the city. Um, yeah, the so time the tables, first part. Yeah, the I'm university. just okay. So the timetables of the university are um, you have about maybe four or five lectures per day. Each one is about maybe two to three hours. Um, sometimes, sometimes it's less, but these are the maximum ones. Um, and you usually have like a break in the middle, maybe half an hour or something like that. However, um, sometimes the timetables could be a little bit all over the place where you can have like a lecture at some point and then, and then some empty space in the middle and then you have other lectures. Um, what else? Obviously right now we're in the middle of a pandemic so everything we're doing online. Um, everything is halted at, at the moment but uh, usually it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a schedule, a little break in the middle and then that's it. So what, what's your typical day? Like you start at 9 a.m., you get one hour lunch break and finish at like four or five. Like what would you say is the typical morning to night? So you'd, uh, yeah, like you said, maybe the first uh, the first uh, uh, um, class would be around, around nine, maybe. And you'd finish right about maybe 2 p.m., 3, 3 p.m., something like that. It usually doesn't go after that. And like I said, in the middle, there's a break. And between each class, there's about 15 minutes, you know, just a break, maybe to eat something or buy some, buy coffee or something like that. Uh, and of course, every professor is different. Like if you go one minute late for a certain professor, it's it's all hell breaks loose. And, so, you know, it depends on the class, like everywhere else. You know? Okay. And what, what is your like semesters like uh, the year year long? Um, like when do you have classes and when do you have exams, basically? All right, so um, the semester is uh, it's, it's it's divided into two uh, two sessions where you do exams. There's no exams in the middle of the like you. It's it's not legal to have exams during lectures. So uh, we would start about October, and the exams would be around uh, January February. That's that's the first mid year session. And then the next session, which is the summer session, uh, would be around May, June, July, right? And for each exam, there's multiple uh, um, trials. So you can do the exam multiple times and you can select the date. So you can uh, essentially create your own timetable. So each student's gonna have a different timetable for their subjects, according to which subjects they choose to do earlier. Uh, let's say, for example, we're talking about the May, June, July se uh, session. So, uh, Let's say we're talking about biochemistry. Uh, you would have a session for biochemistry or a possible date or a possible time to do the exam during maybe uh, 10 May and then another trial at maybe 23 May and then another trial and maybe uh, the beginning of June. And, you know, so, so you have multiple trials for each exam, which is obviously a good thing, but sometimes um, it gives a false sense of... Uh, you know, oh, I have another trial. So it, 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 it causes some people to push some exams back, which gets them crammed up at, at the end. Um, what's interesting is that you said that you have exams in May because the other, like in our university, we don't start until June. We still have classes in May. So like, what is your class like uh, timetable like? Like when do you start classes and when do you end them? Um, let me just... Um... The laptop was about to discharge. Um, so, actually, let me try to pull up 
the timetable to show okay. you. But yeah, uh, in, in May, there are exams, of course. Um, and and during these exams, you, you're not even legally allowed to have lessons. So yeah, we do have exams in May. I don't I don't know if uh, about other uh, um, universities. And what's your like, what about like summer and first semester? What when do classes start? When do classes end? Um, summer? Um, you mean the the, be the beginning of the semester, the beginning of the year? Yeah. Right about October. It also depends on the year. Like first years start maybe a little bit later, obviously, because it takes time for all the students to come to the city to, uh, you know, attend all that. And, uh, you know, but usually starting from second year, you start maybe in uh, uh, early October. So first years maybe uh, by November and first years are as or second, third, fourth years are early October, maybe sometimes September. Okay. Um, it really depends on the year. So like I assume that's how it is for preclinical where you, you know, you have your classes and you have your exam sessions. Um, how does this change for like clinical years and how is clinical experience built into your timetable throughout the six years? Mm -hmm. um, so clinic, uh, clinical experiences have been very uh, limited because of obviously the pandemic. Yes. And as we're going into the pandemic, I'm going into my clinical years. So I've only got to experience a little bit. Uh, however, let me actually show you what they give us uh, to to um, to keep track of our um, what do you call it? clinicals. All right, so you get a small booklet where every clinical you attend, the professor would sign next to it, and then you would show it uh, to be able to attend the exam. And uh, each each uh, subject would maybe take, uh, l let's say, actually, let me show you, actually, here it is. So here you have the professor, the subject, and mm -hmm. the signature next to it, um, you know, obviously to show that you, you showed up. So as you can see here, I only got to get these few signatures. Yeah. These are singular dates that I've been to. And this sheet is for a whole year. So these are all, these are all the clinicals that you have. So you can see the amount of clinicals you get per year. It's just this much. And that was for third year. Um, so you yeah. Do you know it, if it like increases in fourth or fifth or sixth year? Like Yeah, definitely it does. But um, right now we're actually doing it online. We're, we're, we're watching the clinicals online as AFPs. And uh, yeah, they usually they're, they're Sometimes they do it in weekends when there's no uh, when there's no classes. Uh, sometimes it's after classes, but uh, it actually sometimes it's during classes and some people aren't able to attend the class. Okay. But it's small group, so it's maybe like two three uh, students per group. So these students actually do end up missing a lecture, but they uh, you know they have an excuse with the professor and uh, yeah. Okay, so. What is the clinical experience like? Because like I've talked about this before, but in Sapienza up until fourth year, you only go in like once or twice a semester. And when you go in, it's very like focused on um, how you talk to the patient and the physical examination and stuff. Um, but it's very limited. And then in fourth year, we start doing like more clinical stuff, like, you know, inserting a catheter on the models and small things like that. So like what what is it like? What is your clinical experience like? All right. So every uh, clinical uh, experience or every clinical day that we end up in the hospital is completely dictated by which subject it's attached to. Mm. So if you're maybe uh, doing clinicals for methods in medicine and surgery, you're, uh, you're going to watch surgeries. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's speaking to the patients, like you said, taking their histories, uh, learning how to communicate with them, Take, uh, asking them all which drugs they do, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it really depends on, on, on the, on the, the uh, subject that you're doing. If you're, for example, doing gastro and, uh, gas, uh, GI, you're probably going to watch it like maybe a colonectomy or something like that. So it really depends on the subject. And, it, uh, and all of that, that was, I think that was third year uh, in, in Napoli. Okay. You know, let me just make sure that... Uh... I mean, again, it, like, it's more so to 
because like we're really trying to, to make sure that the interviews show that the standard is pretty like same across all of the Italian schools. Like it's not any different in Milan or Sapienza or in Napoli. Um, like, you know, uh, I personally don't know how it's like, so I, I'm, I'm not comparing anything. I'm just saying, uh, no, 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 I know, but I'm saying like what you're describing to me sounds like exactly like it is everywhere else. Oh, is it? I mean, yeah, okay. pretty much. Like, I think it's pretty well known that the Italian system kind of lacks some practicals. Like, you, st I mean, this is a whole nother topic that I will do a whole nother video on. But basically, mm -hmm. your clinical experiences, you kind of start in third year, it ramps up, it's a few days a semester, and then obviously it goes up, and it's based on what subject you're doing then and there. Yes, exactly. Okay. Cool. So we briefly talked about um, exams. So I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to add, but you have multiple attempts a year mm -hmm. and you choose them. There's like certain uh, dates for it. You can't do it during class times. Again, that's pretty standard, <laughs> I feel. Yeah. And um, are they oral? Are they written? What, what's the modality? Uh, all of, uh, I mean, most of them, maybe 95% of them are oral. Some few things require a written exam in order for you to be able to do the oral. Like you need a certain grade on the written exam for you to be able to be allowed to do the oral. But generally, yeah, they're all oral exams, except maybe just like chemistry at the beginning or something like that. Yeah. So it's kind of the same for us. It's mainly yeah. Um, yeah. oral exams. And does mm -hmm. your university do like cadaver dissections? Absolutely not. They made it clear from the first day. <laughs> Did you get, oh, well, I guess you're still, you're, you're in third year, right? uh right now no i'm fourth year okay um because for us like we didn't get to do like technically a cadaver dissection but in fourth year we had to do like we had to attend an aut autopsy when the mm -hmm. university hospital was doing and like the pathologists were actually doing a patient case so do you know mm -hmm. if you would have had like some sort of similar experience with attending an autopsy well, uh not a not an autopsy on a dead body we, we actually uh we've seen surgeries on open open surgeries on live people but i haven't seen an autopsy yet no and okay. it goes show probably because i'm at fourth year now and it's during the pandemic this is during yeah. 2021 so yeah <laughs> the, the, these are kind of hard interviews to do considering the year that it is because everything has changed so much and some universities are still like i mean it's been a year but somehow like they still don't know what they're doing um but cool so what are the average tuition fees like all right so um for me, uh, I'm not sure how, what other people pay. For me, the way I uh, I came in was, I would pay, I would have to pay 1,600 euros per year. And so, uh, but there's there's this uh, document that you can, um, <clears throat> uh, you, you, there's a document that you can make or create, uh, which is called the ISEE, um, where you can um, show up. Uh, tell them uh, or show them your your income uh, sometimes they ask for your parents income as well depending on the situation and they calculate it and depending on your the family income they reduce the uh, the amount sometimes it can even become zero so you only have to pay 200 euros per year this is the minimum which is the taxes so you actually have to pay that whether you uh, need to pay or not but yeah so it's 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 um, relatively very cheap yeah. compared to other countries. I, I think Italy definitely has like the lowest tuition fees in Europe, mm -hmm. especially for an international program. So other Medicine. than the, the ISE or the ISEE, which is basically showing your family income, <clears throat> do you know if there's any other like scholarship options? Like, is there needs based or merit based? Like what are the different scholarship options that you yes. have? So I haven't pursued specific scholarships. Uh, simply because I I didn't think I really needed them, uh, so I don't so I'm not clear on the small details of them. But I do know that there are uh, many scholarship programs, or at least a couple. One of them being, I think, is called Adisu, mm -hmm. uh, in which you, uh, depending on your grade or if you keep a certain standard uh, of average, uh, you can uh, you can not only get free tuition but also they, I think. Uh, give you a certain amount of money uh, in order for for um, you know accommodations. Yeah, so they it's like a grant um, that they. Yes. It, yeah, so I I think like for you guys I don't it's called you said it's called Adisu. I think so. Yeah. 
Yeah, so here As, we have pretty sure. Lazio Disco, like which is Lazio Disu, and it is basically like needs based, but you need to keep up a certain average to qualify mm -hmm. for it for the following year. What about like working opportunities? Do you know if there are opportunities to work for the university, like um, Borsa, as they would call them? For the university, I'm not sure. And okay. uh, I, I, I do know that there was some teaching opportunities uh, for some people from from my, some some people who were my seniors who are uh, currently graduated. Uh, but they, they were very few and far in between. My friends, right? I have some friends right now that are doing, uh, that are actually working in Napoli, but it's not connected to the university. So some some of them are teaching English. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are, uh, you know, I, I know a girl that's teaching gymnastics, but oh, it, it doesn't cool. have to do with the university at all. Yeah. yeah. So, do you think um, it's flexible enough that you could have a part-time job? Say, like you couldn't get a scholarship. If you wanted to, could you work part-time and study and go to classes and? I, I know pandemic times it kind of changes the question. Oh, and I'm not I'm not thinking about pandemic times, but honestly, this question is better answered individually. Yeah. Each person is completely different, you know. Uh, some people are able to organize their time very very easily. Some people um, uh, even even if someone is organized, but some people aren't able to, you know, uh, process the information as fast as other people, so they need more time to study. It really depends on, on, on who you are completely, like uh, day and night difference. Mm. Um, and how much do you reckon like accommodation costs? Like, I, I, I really hate this question because it really depends on the student. Like, do you want to have roommates? How far do you want to live from the city? So not only the student, but the city as well. Yeah, not only the city, but like the, the, the place, the position in the city, the how the apartment is like, it's, it's very so... different. But Sorry, the, the, the standard kind of scenario that I'm asking everyone so that people have an idea is that it's a shared house, a private room in a shared house within 30 minute walking distance or transport. Mm -hmm. And obviously a safe uh, neighborhood. All right. I would say uh, 30 minutes. That's uh, generous. Um, maybe 300 euros. Rent. wow or that's really good or a little bit less even okay so what about uh say like a monolocale you said you said you said uh two people right well i just meant like a shared house it doesn't matter how many people but the room is yeah. private <laughs> maybe 300 maybe 250 and, wow. and that's completely normal if it's uh if it's monolocale maybe about 450 500 that's pretty good. And does the university have accommodation options or is it mostly like private? Um, uh, no, but there are dorm room, uh, dorm rooms that I, I don't think they're connected to the university at all, but there are, they are for students and they are pretty cheap. There are dorm rooms that are uh, about 250 uh, euros per month. Like you have your own room, big bed, desk, uh, own bathroom, everything. Wow. And it's a very nice place, and but it's it's a little bit too like far from the university, like maybe a thirty minute by by train, like or by metro. So you wake up, you take a thirty minute commute. Okay, so it's 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 all about like what you're willing to give up on, because I mean I don't know how it is in Napoli, but I know that a lot of international students struggle with finding housing if you're not Italian here. So... Absolutely, that's one of the biggest problems here. Yeah, finding a company. I have heard that from a few students, so I guess like the nice thing about being in an accommodation, like student actual accommodation, is that as long as you pay your rent, you are guaranteed to find a house and it's going to be up to a certain quality. Even So like it depends on if you want to trade like travel or if you want to trade living with people, but I would say that's pretty cheap, like 300, 250 euro, 300, that's like a really, really good price. Um, I could compare it because I have <laughs> friends all over Italy and they, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty cheap. Yeah, so... The next question I kind of want to ask, we're, we're like really spritzing through this, which is great, is, and again, like a lot of these questions, I really hate asking them because I know how like variable they could be, but it's basically like, what are your class dynamics like? Because for example, in Sapienza, we're like 40-ish people on a good day if everyone shows up. Uh, on average, we're only about 20 people and that really affects our relationship with the professors. So what are your uh, class dynamics like? It is almost exactly just like you described. 
Okay. To the T. <laughs> to the T. We're about maybe uh, we started off about maybe sixty at the beginning. Right now we're down about maybe forty ish, and when people show up, maybe it's about twenty, twenty five. You know, that's exactly just like you described. <laughs> so it's, I think it's not even variable at all. <laughs> okay, but I mean, like. It changes year to year as well, right? Like because I'm more wondering oh. about like the dynamics and the relationship. Because I'm very lucky. Like my year is great. We're very collaborative. We share everything. But I do know that some years, no shade, uh, some years don't like sharing things. They don't share information. They like you know talk to professors and don't notify the rest of the class with important announcements. So like how how would you describe the general dynamics in your university? Right. Um, of course when you have a very diverse group of people, you have people who tend to stick with, you know, the people who are, uh, who are like, you know, people make friends with people who are like, you know, people from the same country and stuff like that. So sometimes, sometimes you get these, you know, cliques of people who, have, who are like just one nationality altogether, sometimes. However, in my class, um, after a few, like, uh, after a, a a while after people got, you know, used to each other and people started, you know, becoming closer. I would say people are pretty collaborative. So what we do is we like we actually uh, like uh, uh, we fix who's going to maybe record the lecture, especially during the pandemic time, because you really need to be collaborative during that pandemic. Who's going to record? Who, who has backup recordings? Who's going to upload it to the Google Drive? Who's the representative of the class? So yeah, to an extent, it's pretty collaborative, uh, but it could, it can be sometimes a little bit clicky, if you know okay. what I mean. Sometimes. And um, how does your class size affect your relationship with your professors? Like, because we're small, so we we like spend a lot of time talking to them. Like, you can really get to know a professor. They take special mm -hmm. interest in us. I mean, obviously, it depends on the professor. Some of them hate being there. Some of them love being there, but. Do you think the class size impacts the relationship? Like, how would you describe your professors in general? <clears throat> um, so far, we we didn't have a any particular professor that was particularly interested or a little extra invested into us. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, generally most of them were just doing their job. Um, however we started noticing that during like the third and fourth year, the professors were much nicer and much more uh, willing to be helpful. But alas, you know, the pandemic. And then uh, we were left wondering what could have been, you know, we're listening to these professors who are very nice and keep asking and talking to us during like the, the Zoom call. And you're thinking, you know, this could have been, you know, this could have been something nice. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was really tragic, but yeah, yeah. okay, um, I can feel that. What What about the level of their English? Like, would you say it's generally Ooh. above average or like, are they understandable? Generally, yeah, they're understandable. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes you get like the anomaly teacher here and there, uh, professor here and there who will have a hard time, um, you know, communicating in English and they're probably very good at what they do and they know their, their subject top to bottom. However, uh, sometimes you get these professors that they do know their subject, however, communicating it in English is a different story. But generally, yeah, uh, they, they're not in, in, in like very big subjects and uh, yeah, generally they're understandable. You can get what you want. Yeah. Okay. But like, I mean, overall, you say the quality is good. Like you're yes, pretty happy, yes. right? Overall, it's, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so kind of moving on from that to like the teachers to the teaching facilities like what are your anatomy labs like what are the histology labs like how would you how would you basically mm -hmm. summarize the I'm, again <laughs> you can't really go to them during the pandemic but from your limited experience in first and second year um how would you have described the teaching facilities and you know things that were available to you as resources so <clears throat> we do have a lot of uh, facilities actually we do have a big big uh, anatomy museum in our university it's very uh, it's really good actually with, with a lot of embryology also in, inside it but uh, but the thing is they never like you're never in class and then the professor decides to take you there you can mm. just go there alone yeah you know? 
So it's not very um, embedded into our course. However, it's there and you can use it. Um, we have uh, the, the library here isn't that big, uh, you know, um, last time I've seen it, which like a year and a half ago, you never know what improvements have been done throughout this time. Or not. Um, which is, yeah, which is actually a, uh, which is actually a good, a big point that I, I, I know for a fact that the university have been working on a lot of stuff uh, in the background while we, were, we weren't there. So that's something important to point out. Um, however, yeah, the library isn't big in, by any means, uh, but you do have a place and you do have a lot of rooms to study in. You have, uh, you have, like I said, the anatomy, uh, museum we have, it's, it's, it's very big, um, histology labs and, and so on and so forth. We didn't really get to use these things much because we haven't had these, uh, the subjects to do them yet because we were still in the, in the beginning years. I'm really not sure how it's going to be like in the, in the future and uh but generally yeah we do we do have these facilities however they're not really embedded into the course mm, okay so like they are available but you're not really availing of them um because yeah. i know that like things have changed in sapienza but there were a few things that we didn't we weren't aware that they existed but were like really really cool um yeah exactly okay Just like so. Okay. I think you guys so, have an Egyptian museum too, right? I'm not sure if we have an Egyptian one, but I swear every time I look at the map, I find a new you museum. Do. You do. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. You've been to it, so why are you asking yeah. me? You have one, like. No, no. I've been there and I've seen this. I've been to the university and I've seen the sign and I've. But it was closed. Ah. Uh, and it was they, a long time ago, so I'm just making sure. <laughs> I mean, like the thing is, like, um, Sapienza is the biggest university in Europe, so it has, it's huge it's, it's, and. Yeah, um, by enrollments, I think it's like 140,000 students or something like that. And there's like nine campuses in Rome for it. Um, so the main university itself has like 10 different like small museums. So we kind of have a history of medicine one. We have a really weird like freak show, like fetuses and jars and like weird dissections of things. Like it's, it's really the creepiest thing I've ever seen. And then I, I saw a physics one. I saw an art one the other day. It's just really random. Like you never know what you're going to find on that campus. So I wouldn't be surprised if you said that we had an yeah. Egyptian one, but like, honestly, we have like random ones all over the place. Uh, uh, just like you, you mentioned these, like dis these weird dissections and all that, they, they're in our anatomy museum, but we don't have the rest of the stuff that you just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That was that was a really weird find for me when I saw it because it didn't feel like a museum. It just felt like someone's basement. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> Some murderer's <it> basement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like you have to go like downstairs and there's like no signs and you just walk in and it's just like massive like like a library of it and I I, I really felt like I was walking into a horror show like um Part of the experience. Was, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was it was so weird. I just really felt like I was like creeping around in a haunted house. Um. <laughs> But yeah, it's really interesting, like how some things are completely unknown to. I think it's the English course, but again, this is kind of like a weird rant. But the last thing I want to ask about mainly the university focused questions is um, like sports and canteen facilities, like cafes no. or Mensa or like, how would you? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we actually don't have in the in the Napoli uh, branch of the university, because as you know, the university is actually based in Caserta. Okay, wait. I'm going to open a map, and we are going to look at it together. All right. So I can also describe it. Napoli is the you know N Napoli is this the city of Napoli where the center is. That's where our university is, and that's where the English section is. However, Caserta is like is a city or a town uh, oh, around yeah. Napoli. Yeah. North of it, I can see it, yeah. Yes, a little bit up north. And over there is the main campus. Okay, uh, so you guys actually study in Caserta? Nope, we study oh, in Napoli. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Caserta yes, is okay. the main. Okay. What's the name of your hospital? Like, what's the name of your main campus building or whatever? Like, if I put it into Google Maps. Um, right, yeah, Universita. Okay, I'll try. Oh. I just put in Luigi Van Vitelli Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it came up. Okay. Okay, cool. 
So that's where yeah. you do most of your classes then? Yes, in Napoli. And then there's all of them. That's what where the English section is. However, like the Italian, uh, some of the Italian sections and other and other uh, majors is in that other branch. And uh, so I don't know if there's sports, like you were mentioning sports facilities and, and uh, menses and all that. Mm. I'm not sure what's going on there. I know it's a bit of an upgrade in Caserta. It's mm -hmm. a bit better, uh, quite a bit better. Uh, so they, they might have all these facilities. However, in our, in our side of the, of the coin, it's, uh, we don't have sports facilities. Uh, we don't have a, a canteen or a mensa. We did, but it was, but it's closed off. It's, uh, now it's, uh, it's not working. However, right outside of the university, I'm, the, the thing about the university or our university where it is in Napoli, they, they sort of use Napoli as a campus. Like it's, the, the buildings are scattered, mm. if you know what I mean. Yeah. So between one building and the other, there's, there's a row of bars and cafes and stuff uh so so at the end of the day that's where uh people get their lunch there's always a place to get lunch yeah a variety of places and uh and in terms of sports there's also many many available free places around napoli to play sports right at the central station in garibaldi the central station which is which is about 20 minutes walk like to the university and it's about five minutes walk from my house uh, there's a basketball court. There's a uh, football, uh, sort of like a court. It's not big or anything, but it's 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 there and it's free and it's open. You can just bring a ball and you can play. So uh, yes, the there's these facilities aren't directly uh, provided by the university. However, they're available. You mm. can find them. So I guess it's like a small trade-off to be in the center of the city to having dedicated facilities. Like I know personally, yes. I would way rather be in the city center and not have access to like a dedicated canteen. Um, but you're definitely right in the middle of the action. <laughs> That's yeah. dead, dead on. Okay, so speaking of the city, I'm going to end the mm -hmm. first part of the interview here. So this is going to be like the dedicated university questions and I'm going to stop and restart the video and yeah, uh, we'll continue in part two, which is going to be all about Napoli City.